Nice. Oh! Possible spine injuries, traumatic brain damage, and other moments that professional skateboarders wish they could instantly take back. Today, we are breaking down and reacting to all the unexpected medical scenes and gnarly injuries from the X Games and other skateboarding sessions. Let's dive right in. Oh! Oh, man! You've heard me speak about major traumas or anything greater than 15 feet. That was much higher than 15 feet. That was a lot. And a good thing to point out is he's wearing a helmet. So the helmet is protecting his noggin to a certain extent. If you have so much force, the helmet will reduce a little bit of it, but you're still gonna have a massive amount of force to the head. But I have seen a lot of head injuries where the helmet is broken, cracked, the foam on the inside is broken, cracked, but the head is fine. The heaviest slam we've ever seen. Oh, that is so high. Landing right on the back and hip. Did you see that? Oh. Turning and being able to manipulate your body and land on your lower back hip, would it be better to land on the front versus the back? You're landing right on your back. You're exposing your spine to significant amount of trauma. And landing on your hip, you can have a femoral neck fracture. You can trash your pelvis and break it in any spot. And the problem with the pelvis fractures is they can potentially bleed a lot because the major vessels run through there. Nice. Oh! One of the concerns for injuries at these type of ramps is the edge. You can snap an ankle, you can hit your leg, you can totally just miss it and land on the platform at the top, which people who skateboard, obviously, you know what I'm talking about. Know what am I? This injury, hard to exactly tell, but you know, think about it, you can snap your tibia and your fibula, right? The lower part of your leg. You can have a tibial plateau fracture, which is the top part making up your knee, that you have to have hardware put in there that's more of a flat surface versus if the tibia is fractured on the shaft. You have to potentially either have a long metal plate or a rod going through called a medullary rod. Oh! Where's his helmet? Where's his wrist guards, elbow guards, knee guards? I know it's not cool, but we should be wearing these things. The first thing you typically do when you fall is try to reach out to brace yourselves. And we see a lot of wrist fractures that occur that way. When somebody comes in and they have a fall and they tell us, I don't know what happened. One of the first things we look for are brace injuries. So you're trying to see, were you aware that you were falling and you put your arms out to brace yourself to break the fall, which means you didn't pass out, you just fell. He falls, lands right on his arms, face, and chest, and you just see him bounce. You worry about rib fractures anteriorly, but also posteriorly, because the energy squeezes and can go out any direction. He lands on his chin, so you worry about a whiplash injury, as well as mandible fractures dental fractures, and then obviously any type of laceration or abrasions. How bad is it? I wanna look. It Oh yeah, no, that's that's cut open, dude. Hard to see with the blood there if it's a through and through laceration versus abrasion. This individual would definitely needs to be monitored because that's a fall on concrete, big massive head injury. If there's any type of confusion, nausea, vomiting, it needs to either be watched for four hours or taken to the emergency department immediately to get a CT scan of the head and possibly of the jaw, especially if the jaw does not feel right. Learning new skateboarding tricks takes a lot of energy and dedication as well as focus. Instead of reaching for that like classic energy drink, maybe try something out there called Level Up. Check it out, lifehappens.com or on Amazon. Oh, having a seizure? We see a tonic clonic type motion of head trauma causing a seizure. So seizure activities, we have multiple different types of seizures. You have grand mal seizures, AKA tonic clonic, where it's like tight, not tight, tight, not tight. And then you can have partial seizures or petite mal, which are like almost like small or absent seizures where you don't even tell, but somebody's kind of just like staring into space. Wow. You can also have hypoxic events where somebody passes out having a little bit of shaking and you think it's a seizure. So individuals, a situation like this, this looks like a seizure, you, we need to protect them. So if there's big movements of the head, you increase the risk of having more head trauma where they smack the head against the ground. Typically, you want to log roll this individual to their side. The reason why you want to do that is basically protecting the airway. There's an increased risk of aspirating, vomiting, or even just aspirating on saliva into the airway and causing issues 
issues. Hold it. Hand the lamp, bro. Put it on your There you go. Okay. You should be all right. You hear me? Looks good. Can you hear me? Did you really get that? Yeah. The friend is good by trying to pat the head. Please do not try to stick your fingers in somebody's mouth. If you're worried about them choking on something, they can bite your finger off. Obviously, you gotta call 911 so they did the right thing. Trying to discern the difference between a seizure and a syncopal episode or passing out. The person who wakes up from a syncopal episode or passing out will just be like, what the heck just happened? Somebody who stops seizing is still going to be out of it and they'll wake up very confused, sometimes even quite combative because they've just short-circuited their brain, basically. Oh! All of the weight just taken right into the axilla, upper part of the left arm, and then the forearm gets stuck. What injuries are we worried about? Obviously, that injury can cause a dislocation of the left shoulder itself or a fracture relating to the shoulder anywhere in this area, and then it could even cause a mid-humerus fracture. Just depends on where it gets hit. So if you get fractures, obviously it needs x-rays and we need to see if they're displaced or not. If they're displaced, we have to do a reduction, basically meaning sedation and putting it back in realignment and putting a splint in. And then the question ends up being, do you need surgery or not? If there's a good reduction, sometimes you do not. Oh, that ankle just went the wrong direction. Ooh, Nelly. Fracture dislocation is my first bet. Sometimes you can just dislocate it. Treatment basically will initially be the same. So you wanna stabilize it, give somebody pain medication and be seen at the hospital. Pre-hospital setting, they'll stabilize it, put you in whatever splint they have, give you pain medication, get you to the hospital. We need to get x-rays of this. Definitely double check that you have good pulses. Mid shaft fracture, right of the forearm, both bones are broken. Fracture of the radius, which is the bone along the thumb side, and then the ulna, which is on this side. Obviously, you gotta check to make sure there's no vascular injury. Make sure that their nerves are all intact. For these, don't go to the urgent care because there's the potential of having to do a reduction. So what happens is you have these two bones that are now potentially off from each other, and when you try to reduce it, get both of them to line up perfectly, but it doesn't happen every single time. Nice. There's a pole. Oh, that's pretty cool. <gasps> oh. <laughs> Luckily, the pole is actually wider. If it was a lot smaller point, then you increase the risk of rectal and anus trauma versus this is most likely probably just trauma around the tissue of the butt. But I get concerned about fractures of your ischial tuberosities or your inferior pubic rami, all because of where the bones are. So you do increase the risk of having fractures back there. Unlikely tailbone fractures. I'm more worried about things relating to the perineum as well as the butthole. If you guys enjoyed this video, definitely check out this playlist right here. Definitely we guys want you to binge watch it. And as always, make sure you subscribe, turn your bell notifications on and hit that like button for me. Thank you so much for watching and stay healthy, my friends.